Few days back you must have heard in the news that there was a volcanic eruption on the island of Tonga. Tonga is an island country in the South Pacific Ocean. It is surrounded by the island of Fiji and Wallace and Fatuna which is a French island to the northwest. Then there is the Samoa island to the northeast. After that there is the island of New Caledonia which is a French territory and then we have the island of the Vanuatu to the west. The nearest foreign territory is the island of New Ye which is on the east. And finally in the southwestern region there is the Karmadec Island which is part of New Zealand. Tonga is about 1800 kilometers away from New Zealand's North Island. There are many small small nation islands in the South Pacific Ocean. Now what happened was on January 16th an underwater volcano erupted near one of the islands in Tonga. The name of that island is Hunga Tonga. It is located to the north of the main island of Tonga. So what is an underwater volcano? Underwater volcanoes are also called submarine volcanoes. Let me explain how a volcano erupts underwater. When there is a divergent plate boundary in the ocean, in other words when two oceanic plates are moving away from each other, molten basaltic magma from the mantle comes up and spreads on the ocean surface. It is also called as mid-oceanic ridge. When magma comes out, it forms an underwater volcano or submarine volcano. A good example is the Atlantic Oceanic Ridge. It is a good example of a divergent plate boundary. Now divergence happens in two continental plates too. That is how oceans form. Volcanoes don't form that way, only oceans are formed. Now underwater volcanoes are also found near convergent plate boundaries. When a heavier plate converges or slides beneath the lighter plate, that is called subduction. Now convergence can happen between two continental plates, two oceanic plates and even between one oceanic and one continental plate. During subduction, trenches are formed. Since the heavy tectonic plate is pushed beneath the lighter plate and deep into the mantle, causing the seafloor and outermost crust that is the lithosphere to bend and form a steep V-shaped depression. Now this causes earthquakes and underwater volcanic eruptions. Tonga's volcanic eruption is due to subduction and not due to seafloor spreading. Subduction is caused due to convergence and seafloor spreading is caused due to the divergence plate boundary. If you look at the island of Tonga, it sits at the center of two major tectonic plates, the Indo-Australian plate in the west and the Pacific plate in the east. Since the Pacific plate is denser, it slides beneath the Indo-Australian plate. Tonga in New Zealand becomes the subduction zone. As I've mentioned, subduction zones are prone to earthquakes and underwater volcanoes. That is why you must have heard in the news that right after the volcanic eruption in Tonga, there was an earthquake that triggered a tsunami. So underwater volcano, earthquake and tsunami all happened because the Pacific plate was sliding beneath the Indo-Australian plate. Now the exact reasons as to why two continental and oceanic plates converge or diverge, where and how it happens is still being studied. It is not that easy to understand and study this whole creation in its fullest sense. If you notice, I use the word creation. If we pay attention to anything in this world, even our own body we can closely see that there is creation. Our body cells are regenerating every single second. It is an ongoing process that will go on till we die. But the only mind boggling thing is who is the creator. Because if there is creation, there has to be a creator. We cannot separate the two. Similarly, when two continental plates or oceanic plates converge or diverge, it is still being studied. Although there are theories, what is the exact reason behind it, we still don't know. And maybe perhaps we may never know the exact reason behind it. As I said, it's an ongoing process. If something is constantly evolving and changing, it's difficult to study it because there will be too many variables, too many patterns that are beyond human comprehension. Anyways, I hope you have now understood how an underwater volcano occurs. Now let me elaborate on the creation part. After this incident in Tonga, as usual, social media was flooded with videos and photos. Now needless to say, this volcanic eruption has caused significant damage. So from a human's perspective, yes, we look at it as damage, loss. But if you look at it from nature's perspective, it is called creation. I'll explain how. Now what happens is that as the underwater volcano continues to erupt, all the lava that comes out of the earth's crust piles up on the seafloor, eventually forming an underwater mountain. As the volcano continues to erupt, the underwater mountain's elevation grows higher and higher, eventually breaking the surface of the water. Once it is out of the water, it becomes an oceanic island. 
So this is how a volcanic island or a sea mount is formed. Now in the next stage, tiny sea animals called corals begin to build a reef around this island. These corals are very hard in nature. It surrounds the island just below the ocean surface. Over millions of years, the volcanic island erodes and sinks to the sea floor. This process is called subsidence. The sea mount erodes into the sea and its top portion is made flat by the constant pounding of powerful ocean waves and wind. Ultimately, the island sinks below the sea and all you can see is a ring-shaped island formed with a coral reef. That is what is known as atoll. And in between, you will have a pool of water which is called a lagoon. So this is the creation I was talking about. It's an ongoing process. Destruction and creation. We humans are in between for maintenance. The planet is not going anywhere, we are. If you see, we humans are only interested in keeping our own habitat clean, so that we can live comfortably. But nature is totally opposite. It heals itself. It's a self-correcting system. Of course, the damages caused by this natural calamity is massive. It's an island after all. Help doesn't arrive that early because communication lines are down. The ash cloud due to volcanic eruption has caused some contamination. Homes are filled with flooded water. The eruption was so powerful, it was even heard 10,000 kilometers away in Mexico and Alaska. The volcano's eruption lasted at least 8 minutes or so and sent plumes of gas, ash and smoke several kilometers into the air. The earthquake was of 5.8 magnitude and the shock wave was enough to create waves of 1.2 meters high that was seen at Japan's Pacific coast, US and South American west coast. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.